Good evening, everyone. It is Wednesday, January 19th, 2022, and I am your host, Cricket Lot. And tonight we're talking about Young Living Essential Oils and the 10 Biggest Essential Oil Mistakes. And I have an added bonus one that I'm going to add. And if any of you can think of one, you can add it at the end too. So um, I don't have slides for this one. It was on a blog. If you got this latest um, newsletter in your order, uh, January, February, March of 2022. I know they all look the same because Mary's picture is the same. Yeah. Get on there. <laughs> I can <laughs> never get it to line up with the camera. Anyways, it's January, February, March, 2022. Um, on the back, it says the five most popular blogs of 2021. And so I took this out of there. So um, the blogs are at um, youngliving.com slash blog. So I'll send that out to you. There's tons and tons of blogs on there. And they're written out. They're not, uh, they're not a video blog. And then there's also one that, um, Jacob Young does, and that one's on Facebook. So look for his Facebook page, and then I think you can link to it from there. I'll have to find it for you to see. So, um, so the 10 biggest oil mistakes. Um, it's, they're not mistakes that are carved in stone, but they're certainly solid advice. So <laughs> mistake number one, assuming all oils are created equal. Deborah and I were just talking about this before the call started. Quality and purity varies greatly among com companies. I know you, I'm preaching to the choir with all y'all. So, um, and Young Living Seed to Seal quality commitment means we're super strict on what ingredients we allow in our products and how we source the botanicals for our essential oils. So we test the water, we test the soil, we test the air on our farms to safeguard the process and protect our products. So if you're into knowing just what's inside your essential oil bottle, then here's a few things you can do. Carefully read the ingredients on your essential oil bottle. So if there's any other ingredients besides the oil, not good. Do they put synthetics, contaminants, or cheap fillers in their products? So research each of these companies. Does the company care about the communities, ecosystems, and agriculture practices related to their farms? Look at when Young Living goes into an area and helps a farm, it helps the whole community. The employment rates go up because people are working on the farms. Um, and then because they're employed, then they can support other businesses. Um, a lot of times they help the schools to help the children in the community. So, um, you know, the whole area is improved by having a young living farm there. Do they send, test their essential oils an average of 95 times before they hit the market? We do. We do. Okay, mistake number two. What's Craig doing back there? I see you keep laughing and we were just discussing all the stuff that we were talking about earlier. I'm like, yeah, we should have just added it to the class. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Mistake number two, uh, leaving what? oil. He didn't, he didn't know the 95 times. We're learning lots. Yeah. Um, this, even this brochure says 20 times. So um, 95 times. I had no idea. Anyways, leaving essential oils out of your personal care routine. So your bath, your shower, your toothpaste, your... I have one. Yeah? Test them for sensitivity and it's, uh, uh, before using a large quantity. Okay. Thank you, Rick. What did he... Rick said um, his mistake was testing it in small quantities on your body before you use it in large quantities on your body. Very good idea. Um, so 
add a few essential oils to your bath. Um, lavender, geranium, and copaiba become a mini R&R retreat for, um, for your personal care. Um, use a, do an essential oil massage or enjoy a home at home spa night. Um, put um, tea tree oil battles blemishes, kilochrism hydrates parched skin, frankincense give you that radiant glow. And that's just a handful of the beauty boosting oils on the list. And of course, our personal care products all have essential oils in them. So I don't know if other companies carry personal care products with essential oils in them, but that's a good one. And um, speaking of frankincense, Hiawatha, I owe you a huge apology. What? Um, you have points available. You could have ordered your frankincense with your points. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, no problem. <laughs> um, mistake number three, ingesting all essential oils. Sure, some berries are edible, but unless you pick them from uh, the garden or the grocery store, it's best to proceed with caution before popping random berries in your mouth. And the same holds true for essential oils. While you can flavor your favorite beverage with fresh lemon juice, you don't always have fresh citrus on hand. Lucky for lemon and lime and tangerine lover, lovers, our Vitality line of essential oils is an easy way to add a burst of flavor to your beverages. And then you can use black pepper, ginger, or coriander to spice up your cooking or your next batch of baked goods with a little cinnamon bark. So what's the difference between Vitality and standard essential oils? Vitality oils and their classic counterparts contain the same oils, okay? Infer what you will from that sentence. However, Vitality oils are labeled for dietary use and the classics are labeled for topical and aromatic use. So, we believe sharing is caring, but only if it's done correctly. So as you're sharing with new people, vitality oils are labeled for di dietary. Um, so keep that in mind if you're sharing with other people. Um, and on this blog, it says ready to experiment with essential oils in the kitchen. Whip up, whip up some homemade blueberry lavender ice cream and it's a link. So you can click on it and get the recipe or our no bake energy balls and there it's a link so you can click on it. So if you go to that blog, you can get those links. Um, so if you're hesitant to try a new recipe, add some pizzazz to so store bought spaghetti sauce by dipping a toothpick in oregano or basil vitality and then swirling it through the sauce. And believe me, a whole drop in a jar of spaghetti sauce is too much. So just put your toothpick in there and then swirl it around. It's a lot. And um, not a fan of hydrating with Plano H2O. H2O, it says try grapefruit vitality in your water for a refreshing midday pickup. Tangerine is an exceptional oil to use in your water because tangerine helps um, hydration. So, okay, mistake number four, forgetting that some essential oils are hot. So this goes along with what Rick said. Um, lots of oils you can put on without diluting them. For example, peppermint feels great as a post-workout massage, but without proper dilution, some of these can be very intense. So, um, and they're called hot because they create a warming sensation when they apply topically. So um, peppermint is considered a hot oil, although a lot of people can put it on straight. Uh, cinnamon bark, black pepper, oregano are all um, of the hot oil. So use a carrier oil um, like V6 or coconut oil or avocado oil, any of those kind of things. 
test the spot on your forearm and watch for a reaction. <laughs> That's like you said, I forget that a lot, hot oils. <laughs> yeah. Um, check the label first to re find out if it requires dilution. I know I never think about reading the, aw, I never think about reading the labels on the oil, but it's on there if you want to um, find out if they're hot or not. Okay, mistake number five, ignoring the staining power of some essential oils. So, so they're fragrant and we want to put them in our lotion, our laundry, our linen sprays. Um, but some of those clean, cozy smells come from some very colorful oils that can stain skin and clothes. Blue tansy hued um, face paired with a jasmine spotted jump jumper is not going to cut it. <laughs> Check out this post to learn which essential oil stain. So blue tansy is really blue. I, isn't that what's in Valor that makes it blue? And jasmine ha, um, makes an orangish color, I think. So. Um, so to avoid stains on linens and laundry, um, apply it directly to the skin and get um, dress before the um, oil absorbs. Add it to your laundry. Um, of, oh, I'm sorry. Avoid doing these things. Avoid applying directly to the skin and getting dressed before the oil absorbs. It doesn't take long for the oil to absorb anyway. So adding it to your laundry. Um, I use some of the, the less colorful oils in the laundry, like the purification or the citrus or whatever. And certainly don't spill it on your clothes. And um, don't spill it on your um, varnished hardwood table because it takes the varnish right off your table. I do a lot of mixing at my table and um, I've started putting a uh, big sheet of newspaper down because I have a big spot where the varnish is all off the table. Not cool. Okay, mistake number six, soaking up the sun's rays before checking if an oil caused photosensitivity. Um, photosensitivity doesn't mean you suddenly dislike selfies. <laughs> We're talking about how some essential oils, especially citrus, complain, contain compounds known as a word I'm not going to be able to say, furanocomarins. Say that 10 times fast. They greatly increase UV sensitivity. So um, they can um, make your skin break out in a rash or they can make dark spots on your scent skin. So always check out the oil bottle before you go out. Um, use them at, at least 12 hours before you're going in the sun. Cover the application area with clothing or a wide brimmed hat. As long as the sun doesn't shine on it directly, you're okay. And seek medical advice immediately if the skin is painful or the reaction covers a substantial part of your body. So, and I would say, you know, put some, well, I don't know, maybe mixing oil is not a good thing because if it's a burning sensation, oil is not good for burns. So, Mistake number seven, keeping kids from the essential oil awesomeness. We love our little humans. They might be sticky, messy, and cranky, but the moment they reach for us, we become putty in their tiny little hands. Aww. So we want our children to live happy and healthy lives. So essential oils and oil-infused products can play a vital role in creating an environment where children feel safe and secure. So you could calm them at bedtime with peace and calming or yeah, um, soothe your toddler's son's kiss skin with Lavaderm after sun spray. Um, use the um, sun, um, oh my gosh, the sun protection stuff, sunscreen on the kids. Um, that's important so they don't get that sun kiss look in the first place. And the seedlings line 
is um, a good one to use for babies and young children. And the um, Kids Sense line, you, um, it's already diluted, so the kids can use that themselves. So, and Feather the Owl Diffuser can set the stage for a good night's sleep with features that include a humidifier, a diffuser, a night light, and white noise, all in one. Okay, mistake number eight, hanging on to your candles or air fresheners. And I know you all know this one. So um, just use your diffuser. Um, you can use your, there's a car vent diffuser. Oh, that's funny. Um, Ashaki said she uses the seedling shampoo on her dog and he was very calm. <laughs> That's great. I love it. <laughs> so um, when you're um, going to work, you can use Citrus Fresh or Stress Away in your car vent diffuser. Or um, there's a list of DIY essential oil diffuser blends on this page too. So um, check that out. Not sure where to put your diffuser. I have a diffuser in practically every room in my house. I have one in the dining room, one in the living room, one in the office, one in each of the bedrooms. There's one in the main bathroom that I, as a direct oil bottle diffuser that I have on a timer, and I diffuse thieves in there for, um, uh, come, you know, keeping down mold and mildew smells in the, in that's because that's the main bathroom where we, we shower and stuff. So. Um, and then in my basement, I have two, one at either end, and I diffuse um, thieves and peppermint, one in one and one in the other. And that's also a direct bottle diffuser. And it lasts about a month, a bottle, because I have it go off only once an hour. Um, and then it only diffuses for like five minutes. So, so it's good. Um, number uh she has a diffuser in each room except the kitchen. Yep, I don't, my kitchen and dining room are kind of one big room. So I don't have one directly on the kitchen counter, but I do have one in the dining room. So they're close. Okay, number nine, using essential oils improperly around pets. So remember, we want to share our essential oil obsession with our pets, but depending on their size, and what kind of pet it is, they're more sensitive, they don't need as much oil, and it's so it's best to heavily dilute them for pets and use in moderation. I mean, obviously, unless you have a Great Dane or a horse that you're using them with, but um, so every animal's different. Give them a way to get out of the room. Um, and there's a whole animal sense line that um, includes infect away, mend well, paragize, pure clean, and tea away. That's totally approved for your pets. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but a portion of all the proceeds from the Animal Sense products supports Vital Ground, which is a nonprofit organization protecting the habitat of grizzly bears and other wide roaming wildlife. So. Um, so they give, um, they give part of the proceeds from that away and accidents can be helped with a spread, uh, spritz of DIY pain, pet stain remover, my goodness. And, um, and there's a DIY paw balm for their little tootsies if they, um, if they get, you know, if they're in an area where it hurts their feet. Um, so there's um, the um, pet uh, reference guide has birds and fish and sheep and chameleons and all kinds of things in there. So you can use essential oils on all of these animals you just want to make sure you follow some general guidelines for them. 
Okay, and of course, number 10 mistake is holding on to toxic cleaning products. So um, again, preaching to the choir here, I know, but um, make the switch to a chemical free clean with um, eight plant-based cleaning products. So um, there's the, the scrub and the, um, the uh, dish soap and the laundry soap and the household cleaner. And I don't know, I can't remember what all they are, but, and there's 29 DIY cleaners listed in the blog. So if you um, want to get more ideas for cleaning, I find the Thieves Household Cleaner does just about everything I want it to do. Very seldom do I need to use the, the Comet scrub. Um, um, is the thief scrub out of stock still? The last time I searched for it, it was. I don't know. I haven't looked for it lately. My bottle lasts so long that um, I haven't needed to replace it yet. So, so and then my um, bonus number 11 is not using the oils long enough or frequently enough when you're working on a certain condition. So, you know, if you're taking a antibiotic, you have to take it for 10 days, right? And a couple times a day. The same with essential oils. You need to take them for long enough and frequently enough to um, make it, let them make a difference. You can't just put one drop on and say, oh, that didn't work to get rid of my cold or whatever. Um, so there's a formula for acute conditions. I don't know if that's um, compliant to use on here, but we'll say it anyways. And that is, if you're starting with a condition that is below the wellness line and you want to raise yourself back up, whatever oil you choose for what you have, use it um, once a minute or once, let's see, let me remember how it is. Every 10 seconds for a minute, once, every 10 minutes for an hour, and then once an hour for the rest of the day. So like if you're using thieves on your feet, that's the formula. Or if you're taking it internally with the thieves vitality, that's the formula. So to get yourself out of that condition, that's the way to start with, way to go with it. So that is what I have for you. Does anybody have some, some ideas that we didn't talk about here that are mistakes that people make when they're using oils? Well, I, I would just like for you to repeat that last one. Okay. Um, about the how to use it, you know. Yeah. Use once. Yeah. Every, some, every, some. every 10 seconds for a minute. Every 10 minutes for an hour. And then once an hour for the rest of the day. Okay, thank you. And one other thing. Sure. I, don't, I just forgot. As you were given that, I guess I, my mind wandered. But what is the second reason? I miss, I have all oh. of them except number two. <laughs> number two. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I know our minds do that, don't they? Um, leaving essential oils out of your personal care routine. Oh, okay. Now I'm going to okay. ask you something, just like a girl was over the other day, uh, helping me to clean and she wanted to use some Clorox. And I said, listen, I, I don't use any Clorox. That's too toxic. Yes. So, now, um, then I probably should have told her that she could have used that thieves household cleaner. Yes, and it kills more germs and lasts longer at killing germs than I the Clorox does. I need to tell her that. Yeah. 
Um, the Clorox, you can damage your lungs. It, um, it creates um, asthma conditions in people. It, it's a terrible cleaner to use. Besides the fact that it stain, you know, it bleaches out your clothes and, you know, it's tough on your skin and everything else. So, no, I had a friend who used ammonia and he mixed it with something, and it, he got a burn. It burned his lungs. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, all those chemicals. Okay, so my hack is you don't put straight essential oil. Young Living products on plastic because it will <laughs> eat through it. <Yeah>. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Like my dining room table. <laughs> yeah. Um, or styrofoam cups or plates or anything like that. It always goes in glass or metal. Anything you thought of while go. we were talking? Um, okay, a lot of things. Hi. The um, not you yeah. know, like Comet cleanser, the Thieves cleanser. If you're out of that, oh my God, straight baking soda does wonders. Yeah, yeah. So I amazing. keep baking soda in the kitchen. The yep. skillets and things, it comes out so easily. Oh, cool. It's That's amazing. a good idea. Yeah. I um, I use some, um, I put a handful of baking soda in my stool and then a squirt of full strength Thieves household cleaner and then brush out the stool. Oh, wow. That's so, nice. yeah, that, that works Repeat. good. Repeat. Um, I take a handful of baking soda. So when I buy baking soda, I buy one of the extra large boxes and I put it under my bathroom sink. And then I'll just pour some into my hand and then drop it in the stool or just shake the box a little bit over the stool and then just a a squirt just a just a tablespoon like of full strength thieves cleaner into the water with the baking soda and then use your scrub brush to scrub it up awesome so i besides thieves products and for the majority of them, these household cleaners, I don't have any other cleaners. Well, I have um, SOS pads, but um, I use those mostly on my bird bath. So <laughs> it, it gets really bad. Um, so yeah, that's the only cleaner I use for my floors and my walls and my, my um, stove top and all that. I use baking soda too with the yeah. thieves. It's, it works. I mean, I I like the thieves scrub, and but since it was out, I was like, all right, let me just go back to my baking soda. And I just yeah. went to Costco and got those big bags from Costco. Yeah. And, I, and that's how I keep up with with my baking soda because I yeah, use, that's yeah. a great idea. Yep. Any Thank other you. ideas, Saki? Um. Since I have pets, I use the baking soda and put the purification or thieves in there and shake it up in the mason jar and use it on my carpet and on the um, furniture and then let it sit and then vacuum it so it smells nice and get the, um, the lovely pet smells out. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, Steve, do you have any um, tidbits to share? on my end what's that i said no tidbits on my end no oh, okay <laughs> okay all right um any questions anybody has or questions that we need to stop the recording for and talk about i was wondering when you said using essential oils for your pets and fish what do you do to the fish well, fish get this um, condition on their skin called ick. Ick. Yeah, it's okay. literally called ick. And um, so you can put a tiny drop of whatever oil it is. I don't know what oil it is to get rid of the ick. 
Well, I'll be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here I'm pitching that little thing out of the tank and getting, getting drops put on his Get little a, rain drop along his. <laughs> We learn something new every night, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Just amazing what you learn on these Wednesday classes. <laughs> okay, so don't take the fish out of the water. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, oh, that is all. Now, um, when you were at the farm, they were you there when they said all the um, Percheron horses, they have a little cabinet above their stall and all the horses have their own essential oils in their cabinet above their stall. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Clever. Yep. And they'll, they'll pull out their lip and put oils in there, or they do raindrops on those percherons, all kinds of stuff. So, yep. Wow. Amazing stuff. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining tonight. I'll oh, send out you. the um, the replay and I'll send out the link for the blog and for this particular blog, both. So oh, thank you. Yep. All right. We'll see you next week. Thanks for a wonderful day. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Good to see you, everyone. Bye. Yeah, Bye -bye. Have a good one. Yeah. Yep. You Bye -bye. too. Before you hang up, before you hang up yeah, I want a friend of mine who lives in um, 